Are you new to FPS and excited by the announcement of Counter-Strike 2, or a vet of the game looking to brush up on his mechanics and game knowledge? In this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know and how to practice it to play Counter-Strike. Guns operate on a fixed spray pattern. You are wildly inaccurate while moving, so if you want to hit anything, you need to be standing still. In order to stop moving reliably, you need to perform a counter-strafe. To counter-strafe, you need to release the key that you are currently pressing and tap the opposite key to stop instantly. For example, if you're pressing A, you need to tap D in order to stop instantly. To practice this, change your crosshair to crosshair style 3, CL underscore crosshair style 3, as you can see, when I'm moving and I just let go of my key, my crosshair closes slowly, but if I perform a counter strafe, it will close instantly. That is how you know you are counter strafing correctly. In order to practice this, just go into the range, counter strafe, and try and one tap the bot. In order to control the spray of your weapon, you need to pull the opposite direction of the spray pattern. You can practice this in Uletical's Recoil Master Map by tracing this dot with your crosshair. This works for any gun that you want. Each gun has its own unique recoil recovery period on its spray, uh, so if you try to shoot too quickly after shooting, um, your recoil will not have fully reset and you will not be accurate again. So learn how long it takes for your recoil to get reset and accurate again on each gun. Crouching does not change the gun's recoil pattern, but it does lower the amount of spread each individual bullet has. You can also move while crouching and still remain relatively accurate, but there is slightly more spread on the bullets when you do so, so it is best used at close to medium range. Tapping is for long range. Bursting works at pretty much any range, long, short, and medium. And spraying is best used for short range or finishing off wounded enemies. You can practice this by going into deathmatch and being conscious of the ranges that you are fighting people and trying to focus very hard on using the correct shooting style for each engagement distance that you get into. Crosshair placement is the conscious action of always having your crosshair ready at an angle in which you think another player can appear, and trying to keep that crosshair at headshot level. The best way, in my opinion, to practice crosshair placement is simply through deathmatch, and it's not something that there are any shortcuts or uh, workarounds for. It's literally something that you have to always be thinking about until it becomes second nature. And then even when it is second nature, you still have to think about it because crosshair placement is that important to the game. A lot of people forget how or forget to focus on their crosshair while they are playing, and that is the reason why their crosshair placement is so bad. They play the game, they don't visualize where enemies can be, they aren't predicting spots that they can appear from, and they get caught off guard often. Pre-aiming angles is placing your crosshair in a wall and using movement to peek an angle quickly and decisively. This is the strongest type of peeking because it is the fastest on your enemy's screen. However, you can be susceptible to uh, being caught off guard if your crosshair is out of place when you get peeked. You can practice this by setting up pre-fire practice in a Y-Prac map like this. You shoot this, turn off the guidelines, and turn on friendly bots, and then you jump into the center, and you have your very own practice. Smoothing angles is when you don't know where an enemy is, and you'll typically keep your crosshair close to a wall and clear a bunch of different angles slowly and quietly as you go. Uh, this is typically done if you are in a clutch situation and you are trying to figure out where somebody is hiding, um, or if you just need to like quietly clear and walk through a bomb site. But peeking uh, via pre-aiming uh, is usually much more efficient and effective for taking duels uh, with people who are you think are playing common spots. 
You can practice this by setting up a pre-fire practice scenario in YPRAC like this. Stop, scope, flick, fire. Ops are incredibly strong in tandem with passive playstyles due to their high damage and long range. However, they are incredibly weak to utility due to their slow fire rate. If the enemy is able to section you off with smokes and flash you and scale and get close to you, you may find that the slow fire rate will end up being a thorn in your side. On CT side, you typically want to play angles that you can easily fall back from after taking one shot, and periodically, you should go for something a little bit aggressive to try and catch the enemies off guard. When holding an angle with the op, you're going to want to think about how the enemy is going to peek you. If you think that they're going to wide peek you, you're going to want to hold your crosshair a little bit further out from the wall to give yourself ample time to react to their movement. If you think that they're just going to jiggle you and they're looking for info, you're going to want to hold your crosshair closer to the wall so that you can try and catch their jiggle. This applies to both uh, opping crosshair placement and your rifling crosshair placement. On T side, typically, you want to post and hold for initial aggression or take an opening duel. You should also be locking down sight lines or holding common spots with your ops so that your riflers can scale into sight and have one less angle to worry about. No scopes are either typically a last ditch effort or you're trying to put somebody in a highlight reel. Don't expect them to hit consistently unless your name is simple. The best way to practice opping is typically going to be in a deathmatch, uh, but sometimes it can be hard to find deathmatch servers that allow for ops, and if they do, sometimes they're locked behind VIP. Um, the other way to practice opping is uh, look for a 1v1 op arena online, uh, but if you're looking to do something in the aimbots map, uh, what I like to do is you open up your console, you come here, you get your aimbots all set up, open up your console, kick all the bots, and then I like to add one bot back and then speed on five, random movement. They'll start running around back and forth and then you can now try to flick, scope in and flick on this moving target. Movement can mean one of two things. Your fighting movement, which is how well you peak, or your uh, ability to fluidly and efficiently move around the map. When you're peeking, you want to make sure that you're only peeking using A and D because uh, it is the fastest on the enemy's screen. You wanna make sure you're also not holding W when you go into a peek because like I said, if you are holding W, then you'd have to also tap S in order to stop your momentum and counter strafe. Um, you can practice this by uh, using the counter strafe practice that I showed you earlier with crosshair style three, but something that I really like to do for practicing uh, my duels and just making sure that I'm only pressing A and D when I fight is playing 1v1 arena servers. If you just go into the community browser, um, you can type in 1v1 arena. I have a couple favorited, uh, but 1v1 and then find yourself a 1v1 arena that you like and playing these is a good break from deathmatch and it's something that I really, really enjoy for practicing my peeking. You can move a short distance without shift walking before you start making noise. Learn this distance so that you can quick peek angles without making noise. Crouching during fights can be a good way to mix up your headshot angle, um, but try not to become too reliant on this where you instant crouch the second you start shooting every time uh, because it does make you a stationary target and it does make you very easy to trade. When jumping, you can sync your A and D key to left and right on your mouse in order to gain distance while jumping. Uh, you gain speed in the air and distance because of it. So if I were to just jump this normally without doing it, I can't make it, but if I do the strafe, I get a little bit extra speed. 
You can practice this in the long jump map that I'll have linked below. Um, just a quick warning about it. If you ever uh, get stuck and can't join a team, you're going to need to use the command MP human team and then make it any. Uh, and that will allow you to get into the map. But it also has this very useful training mode where you can practice syncing your A and D with your mouse movements so that you can get used to doing the strafes. You can go up ladders faster than uh, just holding W and looking at it by looking up and to either the right. And if you're looking to the right, you're going to press W and A at the same time or you can look up and to the left, and if you do that, you're gonna press W and D at the same time. So it's W and then the opposite movement key, so. You'll know you do it right because you sort of skyrocket up the ladder afterwards compared to when you just go up normally. You just sort of plop at the top. You can also quickly and silently go up ladders by using that strafe technique, you know, that distance that you can peek without making noise, applying that to the ladder, so... You can get up the ladder quickly and quietly. Bunny hopping is performed by jumping, air strafing, and then jumping again as your feet touch the ground. Um, in order to do this more consistently, I highly recommend binding your mouse wheel up or down to jump so that it is much easier to hit the timing of a bunny hop compared to just pressing spacebar. I'm not going to cover nade lineups in this video for two reasons. One, there's already a trillion of them on YouTube. And two, according to the announcement video put out by Valve, uh, smokes are being reworked, so a lot of one-ways and stuff won't work anymore. And also, according to Valve, some of the maps are being redone, and with the new textures and new stuff like that, we're not 100% sure that all the smokes are going to work. So, I'm just going to quickly give you guys a rundown of what you need to know in order to actually use utility. HEs are good for doing initial damage at choke points doing chunk damage to players whose positions are known, or finishing off wounded enemies. Flashbangs are good for initiating fights, taking space, getting info, and delaying attacks. You can self-pop flash, but typically it's better to have your teammate throw a flash for you. Smokes are good for sectioning off areas of the map into more manageable fights, cutting off a choke point, or stopping a rush. Molotovs are good for pushing CTs out of defensive positions, catching smokes to throw off your enemy's lineups, and overall just stopping rushes. There's three ways you can throw grenades. Left click only, right click only, or you can do a combination of right and left click. If you start with your right click and then hold left click, it'll sometimes go farther, or it will go shorter than if you start with right click and then go to left click. Uh, but it's kind of like a combination game and you can kind of like feel it out So like if I hold right click and then I tap left click and then let go it won't go as far as the normal right click throw But it's kind of a balancing act. I recommend uh, playing around with it and uh, getting used to it Last but not least we have economy the reason why you see a reddit username on your screen right now is because I am about to do the content creator classic and steal this guy's infographic for my video uh, so I'll have his original Reddit post linked uh, on Reddit. Uh, you can go check it out there if you want to download this graphic yourself. All right, buckle up because this is super basic and not confusing at all. Each player starts with $800. The max amount of cash that each individual player can get is $16,000. If you kill your teammate, that's minus $300. If you get kill with an op or a CZ, that's plus $100. If you get kill with a knife, that's $1,500. If you get kill with Zeus, you get no, no money at all. If you get kill with a shotgun, that's $900. If you get kill with an SMG that's not a P90, that's $600. If you get kill with anything else, $300. If you are the individual to defuse the bomb or plant the bomb, you get $300 all for yourself. Uh, for round win scenarios. If you win the round via eliminations, you get 3250. If the time runs out on CT and you win, you get 3250. But if you're a terrorist and the time runs out uh, and you lose in this scenario, you get zero dollars. Uh, if the bomb diffuse if the bomb is diffused and you win via diffuse, or if you win via explosion, you get thirty-five hundred dollars. Alright, now for loss bonus. Okay, so the loss bonus now has like a counter. And uh, each team starts with one tally 
in your loss bonus. So if you lose the pistol round, you'll get $1,900. Uh, but the lowest amount of money you can get for a loss is $1,400. Every time you win a round, it takes a tally out of the loss counter. Um, so if you win pistol, you will lose that one tally for the loss counter that you had. And then you lose the second round, you'll only get $1,400 because that will count as your first loss. So after first loss, you get $1,400, second loss, $1,900, third loss, $2,400, fourth loss, $2,900, fifth loss, and any more after that, you get $3,400. Uh, on Terracide, if you lose but you planted the bomb, you get an additional $800, so the max would be $4,200. And uh, that's about it. It's really simple if you think about it. A couple quick tips about economy before I go to make it a little bit easier for you. Uh, if you go to the scoreboard, you right click and you can hover over these bars to see exactly how much money you will get next round um, if you lose and how much money the enemy team will get next round if they lose. And also, if you hover over the previous round, you can see how many people survived from each team. Uh, so you can start to gauge whether or not the other team is going to have an economy built up and whether or not they will be on eco or not. Um, sometimes there will be situations in which you need to save, but even if you do save, you still won't be able to buy fully the next round and have a comfortable buy. In that situation, you're in a double save, uh, in which case you should probably just force up a couple of things to try and make that first save a little bit more winnable and maybe a little bit more painful for the other team, uh, and then just full save the next round so that you're ready to buy the round after that. Uh, that's pretty much it. All right, well, there you guys go. Seems simple enough, right? Uh, all that's left for you guys to do now is uh, get into a server and actually play the game. Good luck.